And welcome to another exciting game of Resort Randomizer. If you guys are new here, this is the game where we come to the Disney Springs bus stop station, roll a random number generator, and hop on whatever bus it tells us to. And we go spend the afternoon out at that resort, checking it out, feeling out the ambiance, and seeing if that resort is right for you. Couple of rules to our game. Number one, it has to be random. No matter what number we roll, we have to go to that resort, unless we've been there before. And at that point, we will re-roll, and then by the end of the game, we've gone to every single resort. Rule number two, couple of places we won't be going to, which includes Shades of Green, the private military resort, Golden Oak, the private residence, Galactic Star Cruiser, which is a private experience all on its own, and any third party resorts on property, including the Swan and Dolphin. In the last three episodes, we went to Animal Kingdom Lodge, Old Key West, and Saratoga Springs. Why don't you guys come along? Let's go make some memories together. Looks like 29 is still our highest number. If we end up rolling a number that corresponds with two resorts, like say the All Stars or Contemporary and Wilderness Lodge, we will roll again with a smaller number like one, two, or three and end up deciding from there. We're gonna set our random number generator to 29 and we will let it roll. Number nine, looks like we've hit our first fork in the road. Nine corresponds to both the Grand Floridian and the Polynesian Resort. So we're gonna set the number generator to just two so between one and two, it's like flipping a coin. The grand will be one and the poly will be two. And we're going to the Grand Floridian. Let's go guys. Being on the monorail loop by Magic Kingdom, we are no stranger to the Grand Floridian. Haven't really walked around the actual grounds in a while. So I'm excited to see what all's changed. They've also been doing quite a bit of construction. So I hope that doesn't impede our, our trip today. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to check that one out today. Alrighty y'all, we made it. Not too horrible of a bus drive. However, we are the furthest away from Disney Springs we could possibly be without either being out of Animal Kingdom or being within Magic Kingdom. So pretty far away, but wasn't horrible, including the stop at the Polynesian first, and then it dropped us off. But yeah, we're here, let's go explore. Very gorgeous resort. Obviously being the Grand Floridian, it's gonna be very swanky, very 1920s, turn of the century, like, Floridian Victorian era you're gonna say a one classy Disney hotel this is gonna be it I mean just this lobby alone like look at this so opulent you definitely feel like royalty being here for sure here's the map of where we're gonna be exploring today we're here in the main building on the ground floor we are pretty familiar with this resort like I said um, but I don't think we've quite walked a lot around the grounds so we're definitely going to explore this entire main building this is going to be like the dv suing over here we're going to check out like the health club even the wedding pavilion we'll go check that out too and then we'll just kind of walk around maybe go look at the the guest pool and check out kind of the exterior buildings of all of the rooms to the right of the main entrance is going to be your check-in desk i figured we start here and just kind of make loops around each floor kind of show you guys everything that's in this main building before we head outside right past guest services is the stairwell and then we're gonna keep going over here and we're gonna go in this gift shop that's over here on the right. This is Curious or Clothiers. This is definitely gonna be your higher end store here. There's a couple other gift shops that are here too. We'll start with this one. Definitely pretty high end for sure. On this entry table, you've got some exclusive merchandise including like a lounge fly. This tea set's actually very cute. They do have a tea time here. I don't know, are they still doing the tea time right now? The princess tea time? I'm not sure. I don't know if they ever brought that back, yeah. but they, they are known for having like tea parties here because it's such a such a relaxing, you know, higher end environment. Do you find a magnet? Yeah, it's a magnet. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that's probably cool. one of the better magnets we, we've seen. Mm -hmm. Some more exclusive things, including this, is it Beauty and the Beast? Oh, it is Beauty and the Beast. So it's like a teacup from the Enchanted Rose Lounge. Lots of Beauty and the Beast themes here as well. The front of the resort. What's the back? Ooh, that's cute. I love that. I don't think I've ever seen this ornament before. This is really nice. That is really nice. I do like that a lot. And the paint job's not bad either. Drinkware. And you've got some things like this long sleeve. 
More Beauty and the Beast stuff. I think this is just like a polo with the emblem on it. Yeah, polo with the emblem on it. There's this really pretty like lounge set here. I don't think it's grand exclusive because it doesn't necessarily say grand, but I've, I've never seen it before. It's really nice. It's a nice like kind of satin silky material. Back here in this main room is going to be kind of the men's selection. That front room is mostly the women's. Both sides have things like Lily Pulitzer, Tommy Bahama. I want to say there's probably some Ray-Ban sunglasses in there. Just kind of your more nicer things that um, you would probably want to purchase while being here. They've even got a selection of things like Vineyard Vines, and Matt pointed out it's really good that you have this. So if you're having kind of a more formal night, you can stop right in the gift shop down here and buy yourself a shirt for whatever dinner you're getting ready to go to. Right next to that gift shop is going to be this kind of lounge area. I believe this is where they used to have the princess tea party. Again, I don't know if it's come back or not, but it's called the Garden View Lounge, and I want to say this is where it happened, or at least some form of tea time used to exist here. Let me know in the comments if you guys have done this before, or if you know if this is reopened or not. I just noticed that right outside this tea room is Mrs. Potts and Chip is down there on the other side. This is one of my favorite things that's here. It's a chocolate sculpture that was made by the Grand Flow Bakery and it's of Cinderella. Cinderella is also a character that's pretty prominently featured here at the resort. This is entirely made of chocolate, which is crazy to me. Now during the holidays like Halloween and Christmas, they have like the lobby is home to things like chocolate sculptures. Oh, and Easter too. They have like chocolate sculptures and like the gingerbread house during Christmas time. They do a lot of really cool thematics for those holidays. And Matt pointed it out. That's your hidden Mickey of the day. Coming from the main lobby here, we're gonna turn down this hallway. Down there is gonna be the Grand Floridian Cafe. We'll get there eventually, but I wanna stop into one of the next gift shops, which is the Sandy Cove Gifts and Sundries. This is gonna be more of your like necessities gift shop, like your like food for your DVC room or magic bands, little trinkets to take home. Nothing really like souvenir wise, but kind of at the same time. I'll show you guys. Because there are DVC rooms here or rooms with kitchenettes, there's gonna be things that are gonna be for those like fridges and freezers. So you've got like dairy and meats and things that need to be refrigerated, frozen things like ice cream and pizzas. You've got dry goods over here, like uh, peanut butter and jelly, Pop-Tarts, just snacks, chips, dips, stuff like that. And then I always love to point out that, and this is actually probably the biggest selection I think I've ever seen, but they've got like a pharmacy corner here of things that maybe you forgot or things that you ran out of, things that you may need at a pinch. Um, it's very good to have this. So it's always good to know that this is here in case you need something like this. There's also a collection of wine and spirits behind the counter here if you need something a little bit stronger for your room. Because we're coming up on the 100th anniversary of the company, we're gonna have a selection of treats here. I don't think I've seen any of these yet, but lots of purple and platinums and silvers. This is also gonna be where your collection of DVC stuff is going to be. I've shown this in other videos. It's all of the same merchandise, so I'm not gonna go into big details about it. But if you're a DVC member, I'm sure you already know this merchandise exists. But if not, this is where you get it. Matt found the like wedding stuff here because you can get married here at the Grand Floridian. I'll show you guys the wedding pavilion later, but they've got like ears for the bride and groom. They've got like pictures of the resort. They've got like this cake topper right here. That's, that's very cute. Like a, a cake cutting, like cutlery set. Mr. and Mrs. like wine glasses and bottles. Lots of cool stuff. They have a couple other things in there, like just generic snacks and like coffee mugs. Uh, magic bands, pins, but most of that stuff is gonna be upstairs in like the fun gift shop. We're gonna continue down this hallway and show you guys Grand Floridian Cafe and one of the entrances into the courtyard. We're not gonna go out there quite yet, but it is one of the main entrances, entrances and exits to the pool area. Grand Flow Cafe is one of the multiple table service restaurants here at the resort. We've eaten here before, like when we first moved here and we thought it was okay. It wasn't our favorite. I'd like to come here and try it again to kind of get a better idea of the menu. Brief glimpse at the menu here. You guys are more than welcome to pause at any point and check it out. But I will link the menus in the description like I do with all the resorts. So you guys can check it out yourselves in uh, an easier to read format. Now behind these closed doors is slash was 1900 Park Fair. 
This was a character dining that has not come back since the closures. It used to have characters like Pooh and Tigger, and I want to say Cinderella and the Stepsisters, Mary Poppins, Alice, lots of kind of British literary characters. I guess Cinderella is not British, but hopefully this reopens. This has been one of the locations I've wanted to go to for a very long time, and it's just not back yet. Maybe soon. And at the end of the loop for this bottom floor is gonna be a mailbox. I believe most resorts have one. Check with your front desk, make sure they actually do so you guys can mail things out from your like specific resort. They have an ATM. And then the, the resort map, which we've already shown you guys. I missed this when we walked in, but they do have the recreation activities. You guys know I love to show these off. Every single resort is going to have uh, free and paid things for you guys to do. So like there's going to be poolside games and trivia and movies you can watch under the stars. Some things that you pay for like creating your own Mickey ears or tie dyeing a t-shirt. This might be the most I think I've seen at any resort. I would assume that like the values probably have the most, but this is a lot. Matt wanted us to try our knowledge at the movie trivia since it's at 2.30 and it's about 2 o'clock now. But it does say that it's only about the movie that's going to be featured from like the movie Under the Stars, which is Cool Runnings. I've definitely seen Cool Runnings like maybe three or four times in my entire life, but I could not tell you anything about that movie other than it's about the Jamaica bobsled team. All right, so that wraps up the bottom floor here. We're going to take the stairs to go up. But if you guys need to use the elevators, there are some right there or on the other side of the lobby, right across from the gold bird cage. I've always loved these stairs because it always feels like I'm on a cruise ship. You guys know what I mean? Like they're really narrow, like the ceiling is really low. Top of the stairwell here, we're gonna turn right and do our loop starting this way. And that leads us to the Enchanted Rose Lounge. Enchanted Rose Lounge is going to be a loosely themed Beauty and the Beast bar. We've been here a couple times before. It's pretty nice. It's They've got great drinks. We've never tried any of the food, but we might grab a bite here today. Looks like the hours are at 3.30, so about an hour and a half this will be open. We'll put the menu below for the Enchanted Rose. Normally we go for like a sweet treat when we come out and do these resorts, but they apparently have really good truffle fries here that I've always wanted to try. So we might have to get those today before we leave. Plus I think Matt wants to get a cocktail while we're here. Here's another shot of the interior. I believe this may be the library room. I didn't point them out earlier, but there's also this little mini staircase kind of over by the sundry store that we showed you guys earlier. So you don't have to take the big stairwell. You can kind of shoot up these and it spits you out right here on this corner, which leads us to our next dining locations, Citricos and Victoria and Alberts. Oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. This is recently remodeled and turned into kind of a Mary Poppins inspired theme restaurant. And I have heard nothing but rave reviews about this place. We've never eaten here, but I really want to at some point. Like, look how pretty this is. And like, when I say like Mary Poppins themed, it's not like heavily, it's like you may see some accents for Mary Poppins, but it's not gonna be anything like in your face. So if you're still wanting like a nice subtle dining experience, but you're still wanting some kind of character atmosphere, I think this would be a good option for you. Like every other menu we've mentioned before, we'll put the menu for Citra Coast at the bottom in the description. Like, look at this gorgeous view. This is just like the waiting room for Citra Coast and Victorian Alberts. Like, this is so pretty. Now, let's talk about Victoria and Alberts. If you guys aren't aware, Victoria and Alberts is the most expensive dining experience you can have here at Walt Disney World. It is what they say, like a five diamond yeah. review. It's something that they have the word. Yeah, award given last year. Yeah, and a Forbes travel guide, one of the finest properties in the world. Like this place is no joke. Like I'm talking, this is like hundreds of dollars per person to eat here. This is kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity for some people. Yeah, oh nice. my gosh, 375 and that's just the main, like just no the main. Yeah. yeah, no no add-ons because Add you can also, wine. yeah, wine is 200. I don't know if that'll focus. Wine is 200. And then if you want to do a zero proof pairing, so like non-alcoholic drinks, what's that? 140. I'll put the menu, of course, down in the description below. But like, at some point, I think I would like to eat here. But like, seven hundred dollars for the two of us just to eat here, that that's that's a little bit too much out of our price limit. And I want to say this chef table's dining experience is its own price point as well. Let me know in the comments below if I'm incorrect about that, or if you guys have tried this before. 
Continuing on, these are the elevators that were behind that gold bird cage. And I always forget that they have a Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique here. Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique just recently reopened within the Magic Kingdom. I don't know if this one's ever going to come back because it closed in 2020 with everything else. There also used to be one out in Disney Springs over near like the Toy Store and kind of World of Disney area. I don't think that one's reopened either. So I think it's just the one in Magic Kingdom, which is really strange because it's a very popular thing for parents to have their kids go do. Maybe someday. One of my favorite stores here is going to be Basin. It's just like the one at Disney Springs. So you can go in here and wash your hands with a sample of the soaps they have. Let's take a look at what soap offerings they have today. I guess they're more hand scrubs than soaps. Like I said, this is just like the one at Disney Springs that we constantly go to because I just, I love the feeling of having fresh, clean hands. I'm definitely seeing some ones I've never seen before, like the St. Patrick's Day one. This one is, oh, it's a slime scrub. Interesting. I might use the shamrock one. I don't know what it's going to smell like, but I might use that. Let's see what it smells like. It just smells clean. Kind of like a minty thing to it. I don't think it's supposed to, but it kind of smells a little minty. I think I'm going to do the uh, Satsuma. Oh, there's mm -hmm. a Satsuma one? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's going to smell really nice. Yeah. Do you feel like a new man now? Yeah, they definitely feel really nice. Other than hand scrubs, they've also got a selection of bath bombs and like other bar soaps you can get. They've got create your own candles. There's quite a bit to choose from. Now, right above the entrance is going to be the doors out to the monorail. And then we've got one more store here, which is the M Mouse Mercantile. This is going to be more of your general uh, souvenir stores, pins, shirts, spear jerseys, toys. Lots of 100th anniversary things on this front table. Like I said, just your normal kind of gift shop. Nothing too crazy in here. Spear jerseys, ears, bags, toys. Mostly things you probably forgot to get while you were at the park or, you know, you told your kid that you get something when you first get to Disney. This might be the place you want to stop at first. Coming back around to the stairwell, you've got like a little photo opportunity that you can take part in if you have like photo pass. They've got Cinderella slipper there. We've got fun backgrounds. I always figured that they have this here. And unless I'm forgetting something, that might wrap up all of the main house here. As you probably guessed, we only went two stories high because I believe everything else here is going to be rooms and DVC like stays. So unfortunately, we won't be going any higher, which means we're going to go outside now. We came back down here to the Grand Flow Cafe and we're going to go outside these stores and go check out the pool and the grounds. It is such a perfect day out. Gorgeous. This is going to be one of two pools here at the resort. This is definitely going to be one of the more quieter pools because it's the one that doesn't have the kids splash pad. And it is right in front of this exit where we came out of 1900 Park Fair and Grand Flow Cafe. They've got all these lawn games out here too. I can't quite tell what this yellow and green one is. Oh, oh, it's like, a, you can make your own putt-putt set. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I love that. Yeah, love that. Big dominoes here. Um, is that like lawn bowling? It's lawn bowling. And I forget what these little racks are called. Do you remember what this game's called? I don't remember, but I know you like obviously yeah. throw those. Yeah, like you have to chuck it and make it wrap around the thing. Yeah, comment below if you guys remember what that's called. And there's also quite a bit of construction happening here at the resort. They're doing a transformation for all the rooms into like a very subtle but very, very gorgeous Mary Poppins theme. I'm usually pretty against like changing IP over into rooms, but like they do such a good job of this one. I'll, I'll put a picture here to show you guys what it looks like. It is the best character designs they've done. A little bit of wayfinding of where we're at in there is going to be Grand Flow and 1900 Park Fair. That first pool I mentioned and lawn games are going to be right there. Now along this path is going to be Gasparilla Island Grill. This is the quick service location. Because of all this construction we've got right now, they don't want us to use this path. They kind of want us to walk along this. So for safety reasons and to follow the rules, we're going to walk along the designated path. All right. That walkway there is the one that we avoided, but here is going to be the Gasparilla Island Grill, kind of within these like umbrellas and trees. It's the quick service. We'll go in there here in a second, but I wanted to show you guys this little marina over here. You can rent these boats 
and take them out for a couple hours or however long you want and uh, enjoy the Seven Seas Lagoon. Because look at that view of Cinderella Castle right there. Where else are you gonna get this view? This is amazing. We're gonna walk down here towards the marina and see if they have like a menu of the pricings of everything. Cause I know the boat rentals are like per hour, but I wanna see what else they might offer here. It looks like we've got a firework cruise, a guided bass fishing excursion, and then you can just rent the pontoon itself. The fireworks cruise is $400, but you can bring 10 people with you. I think that's a good deal. If you bring 10 people with you and split that by $400, that's a pretty good deal. And like, I don't know if that comes with snacks or anything, but I mean, if you guys want a great view of those fireworks, that's kind of like a once in a lifetime Disney thing to do. I'll put a link to the menu of everything that they offer along with the restaurants and stuff in the description so you guys can check that out later. All right, let's go inside Gasparilla now. Gasparilla not only has your Joffrey's location with coffee and things like pastries and desserts, We've also got some hot food like burgers and pizzas, chicken sandwiches, some pretty standard uh, quick service stuff. But over here, they've got like this salad and soup or salad and sandwich collection. And look at this monster. Good Lord, that is a sandwich. Like, I don't know if the camera quite picks up how large that is, but good night, that is huge. Like she's actually taking a piece right there for somebody. Got some cold selections here like salads and beverages, milks, fruits, sodas, beers, dried things like chips, bananas, Rice Krispies, frozen things like ice cream. It's also where your Coke Freestyle machines are gonna be if you have those refillable resort mugs. I've only eaten here once before and it was, I got a dessert back around Halloween time when I did a monorail resort crawl. I went to the Contemporary, the Grand and the Polly and had a different Halloween treat at each one. I'll link that video below so you guys can watch it. I will say one thing that's kind of annoying about this quick service location is it feels far away from everything. Like, like it's not because it's attached to the main building, but like if I didn't, like I remember one time in that video I just talked about, I mentioned like wayfinding of how to find this location and I had my friend tell me that he never would have thought this was back here. Oh no. We've been here so many times. And you've, you've never, never been back here. I've never been over here. It yeah. was so tucked away. Yeah. Other than it's close to the, like, the dock. So like, yeah. that's, I guess, yeah. maybe Just why it's Kind here. of a weird spot. Yeah. And I didn't realize that there was an arcade attached. Pretty standard arcade, kind of small. But I mean, most deluxe resorts aren't gonna have a very large arcade. And at first I thought that was the only door, but there is one that's outside here. So you can come in through this way instead of having to cut through um, the restaurant. Now, I don't quite know what the G-Flow Glow Party is, but Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at seven, they are apparently hosting it. If you guys are staying here and this is happening, check in with the front desk to see exactly what it is. It sounds fun. Now, what's nice about staying here at the Grand is that you are so close to Magic Kingdom, so close enough, in fact, to where a few years ago, they opened up an entire pathway that links the two, because originally you couldn't walk there, but now you can. However, as of the recording of this video, they are having it closed for construction. I don't know how long that construction is going to last, but unfortunately you cannot walk there right now, which means your only method of transportation is either going to be the monorail, which is objectively faster, the boat, which we'll show you guys later. I believe there's a bus as well to Magic Kingdom, but you might as well just take the monorail. I will say though, the path is great if you're leaving Magic Kingdom and want to avoid the chaos of the ferries and the monorail and everyone exiting during fireworks. You can walk, it's maybe 10 minutes, but it, like I said, it is closed right now. All right, so we came back over here to this kind of main area by the pool and by the Grand Flow uh, Cafe entrance. We're gonna move on this way over towards the other pool and kind of show you guys what's on this side of the resort. So this little building here is called the Summer House but I don't quite know what it's used for. It's all locked and I can assume like it's kind of a clubhouse or something. It, like I said, it's not very big, but I don't know what it's really used for. It says there's bathrooms on the other side, but I know that out here is where they do the movies on the lawn kind of thing. So maybe they just keep the supplies for that in there. But what I really want to come over here and show you guys is this view. My goodness, this is a wonderful view. That right there is the Polynesian, and it is gorgeous from here. Like, I don't know if my camera is really picking up just how close we truly are to it, but it's just, it, it feels like I could walk right there. Because I guess I literally could, because there is a walkway that connects the two, kind of like the walkway to Magic Kingdom. Let's go down here to the little beach area. 
This beach sand is really soft. They've got other activities like a ping pong table, giant chess, and some foosball. And I saw another table up there. It might be billiards. I don't quite know where you rent all this from. I would assume some sort of clubhouse, maybe the front desk. Matt said all the supplies for all the games are already out. So I wonder if they just keep them out and then put them away when they close, or maybe they're just out all the time. Like normally you'd have to rent them from like a clubhouse, but I guess not. I don't know. Coming up here to the other pool and the kids splash pad which is based off of the Mad Hatter. So it's like a Mad Hatter tea party. Looks like a lot of fun. A little bit of wayfinding for where we're currently at. Right there is the summer house where they have the movies by the pool. There is the kids splash pad. This looks like it's another entrance or exit back into the main building. Behind us is Bell Services and a walkway that walks underneath the monorail like support beams and out to the parking lot. And then finally over here is the main pool, the more fun pool. They've got like the water feature right there. I believe they've got some water slides. This secondary pool location also has a poolside bar and a combination quick service location. So you can get like chips, burgers, beers, mixed drinks, hot dogs, probably some flatbread pizzas, you name it. Normal quick service stuff. Again, I'll put the menus in there if I can find one online. I will say this pool is actually much smaller than the other one. So I think that other one is the main pool. But like I said, this is gonna be the more fun pool. So this one has like the water slide, the loud pop music playing, the splash pads right next to it. So this is definitely not a relaxing one to be at, but I think this one sounds like it'd be more fun. On the other side of the pool bar outside of the pool is going to be the fire pit for your marshmallow roasting. Just about every resort will have one of these, if not every resort. And yeah, you can pay to come out here and roast marshmallows and make s'mores. And with this gorgeous lake view, like absolutely sign me up. This little sand pit area behind the pool also has these like sand buckets you can go and play with and make sand castles. There's also loungers as well, like on the beach, but there are people using them. So I wasn't gonna film them, but they are there if you wanna use them. So ending the pathway here, and I believe this next area is going to be the DVC wing. Let's go in and find out. Well, that's a pretty little water feature. I don't even know if I've ever seen that before. We found a map. We are right here next to that water feature. This is going to be the DVC area with the Grand Villas. Figured we'd show you guys not only the spa and gym, but the bridal studio and the wedding pavilion. We still haven't been to this far side over here. I don't think there's a whole lot to show. Maybe then like one other restaurant or something like that. Yeah, yeah so we're going to go there towards the very end you guys much but this right here is the convention center we got dropped off right here at the bus which is just right outside this main house i would assume this is meant for probably wedding parties i would assume this is where you have your receptions at probably probably yeah, yeah so if, if we have the ability to go back up front and show you this we will if not that's where it is so we came in through the wrong entryway we came in through that corner over here but we wanted to come in through the main entryway to show you guys just come to the beginning of this lobby this is so gorgeous i honestly think this looks better than the main room for the grand floridian like i love all the uses of blues and browns and of course you've got this gorgeous mary poppins inspired fountain i love this and it feels like we're even more on a cruise ship now with how big this room is what do you think of this area I think it's really pretty. I don't know if I would necessarily say it's the, you know, better than the main lobby. One thing that is nice about it is that it is a little bit more cohesive with the color mm -hmm. compared to the main lobby. Yeah. They also have a chocolate sculpture here, but this time it's of the Mary Poppins penguins, just like the main fountain. I love this. This is so cute. We exited out of what would be the main door for the DVC wing. We're going to cross over here and go look at the gym the spa, and the wedding pavilion next. Right across from the DVC entrance is going to be the spa and gym and like outdoor tennis courts, basketball courts, stuff like that. Unfortunately with the gym, for privacy reasons, I don't wanna interrupt anyone's workout. I'm not gonna show you guys that, nor inside the spa, because it's very, very tiny and there's just not really much to show. But that main door is gonna be for the spa and that main door is gonna be for the gym. Here's a little grilling area with the nice grills. I don't think I've seen these at a resort before. 
strangely no tennis courts, but they do have what they call the sport court. It's mostly basketball, but we've got like hopscotch and four square. I don't know if this gets used super often because it's not like a lot. I think it's kind of shocking that the Grand just would not have a lot of sports related stuff. We're heading towards the bridal pavilion right there. And I noticed this sign that says the walkway to the poly is this direction. The poly is having a lot of construction right now. They're building a new DVC wing. They demolished the old spirit of Aloha Theater dinner show area in favor of that. Lots of work being done. So unfortunately the main pathway is not available. So to kind of deal with the construction for the next couple of years, you're gonna have to kind of follow different signage. But the pathway is normally very, very pretty. We love walking it at night. In fact, you can actually see some of the cranes right there that are just over in the Polly's area. So we came into the bridal studio area and I did not know all of this was in here. I thought it was gonna be like where the bride gets ready for the wedding, which it could also be, but this is more of you coming to check out things for the Disney fairy tale weddings. Like they've got dresses and cakes and like champagne glasses and everything you can look at. Like this is a really pretty room. In fact, we've seen a photographer walk around taking pictures of the, of the groom for one of the weddings. We didn't see the partner, but I assume the wedding is probably within a few days. That was so nice. Well outside our price range, that's for sure. I looked at like Disney wedding stuff one time and I got one look at the base price and I said, nope, <laughs> that ain't for me. This is the wedding pavilion. We're not gonna get much closer because there is an active wedding going on. But yeah, this, uh, if I can find a picture of the like altar area that overlooks Seven Seas Lagoon, I'll put it in here. I assume that little building is probably where the uh, bride gets ready at. To the right of me over here is normally the walkway that you'd take to walk to the Polynesian because see, there's the poly right there. It does have a no filming sign, so I'm gonna be respectful and not do that. But they are working pretty hard at clearing out this area to make the new DVC tower. The construction of the walkway may hinder your vacation if you're wanting to explore more stuff here on the Seven Seas Lagoon. We're gonna walk along this path on the backside of the DVC building that kind of links back up to the pool area where we were initially. Look at that shot of Magic Kingdom. That's crazy. Like you can see Space Mountain, you can see Tron. That'd be a gorgeous see at night. Like all of Tomorrowland in general, that's so pretty. There's one of the Magic Kingdom fairies. And then there's the poly again. And then there is the backside of the wedding pavilion where you can get photos taken at that little archway. And friends, just a reminder, please stay out of bodies of water because they will have gators and snakes. None of this is roped in or anything. It is freely able for you to get down there, but just be smart on your vacation and don't do that. And see that pathway brings us back to our fun pool area. So we've kind of shown you guys everything here at the resort, aside from Narcoosie's and the boat launch to Magic Kingdom. So we're gonna head there next. A Little bit of wayfinding. That right there is the, I believe called the Cove Pool, that kind of quieter one that I showed you guys earlier. And we're gonna follow the signage that says the boat launch for Magic Kingdom. I also forgot to film it, but this main pool over here does have a pool bar, quick service kind of location. Um, so yeah, I just forgot to film it. We came into one of the buildings labeled as Boca Chica. I believe these are just standard rooms. I could be entirely wrong, but I love the vibe of this place. I love the decorations. I think this is more on point with what the new Mary Poppins rooms look like. Yeah, in fact, here is some artwork for Mary Poppins on the wall. More like concept art, not quite stuff from the film, but I love Mary Poppins. All this current construction definitely makes navigating a little cumbersome. So it looks like Narcoosie's is still unfortunately closed. It looks like they're doing a lot of work on it. It does reopen soon. I'll put the reopening date right here in the screen so you guys can see it. But yeah, it should be very, very soon. Right next to Narcoosie's is the boat launch for Magic Kingdom, which is just right down here. And like you can see the top spire of Cinderella's castle. That bridge is part of the pathway that I mentioned earlier that's currently closed for construction but that is the bridge that you would typically cross to get over to Magic Kingdom. All right well I think that kind of wraps up the main heft of this tour. 
we're still going to go to the Enchanted Rose because now it's open. And we're going to go get some, uh, some light bites, maybe a drink or two. So we did decide to get some drinks along with our food. This right here is the Lavender Fog, Nolet Silver Dry Gin, Rothman and Winter Creme de Violet, Twining's English Breakfast Tea, Vanilla and Cream. And this right here is the French Rose Martini Tangere, In Ten Gin, Bulls Apricot Brandy, Dolan Dry Vermouth de Chambray, Lemon and Grenadine. I've definitely had mine before and I really, really like it. And you've never had yours, right? No, I've not had mine. No? Yet. All right, first time. It's so nice. Definitely very lavender if you don't like lavender. I do like lavender as a flavor. Yeah, that one is pretty good. That's really nice. I yeah. really like that. Yeah. Does it taste like rose? No. It is very, like, you do taste that lemon and the grenadine. Mm -hmm. It's really nice, though. Ooh, that is good. Yeah, definitely no no rose that I can taste in there. But it kind of tastes like a, a pink lemonade. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Like an alcoholic. I like lemonade. that. Yeah. And I want to say that these are exclusive to here, right? It says that they Should are be, featured yeah. cocktails because, like, you can get other stuff here, too. We're obviously at a themed bar, so we want to get the themed things for that bar. I, I really like mine. You have to have an acquired taste for not only, like, like a heartier tea, but also lavender. Um, and I... I think yours is right up your alley. Oh, for sure, yeah. You love lemonade. Mm. We got our truffle fries, and they came on a little cart just like they do in uh, Be Our Guest. I love that. Truffle fry, aioli. Now they did say that these were different from the ones that used to be on the menu. A couple months ago, the menu changed. So I don't know how good these are compared to the other ones, uh, but these are apparently hand cut instead of like regular fries that they added truffle and stuff to. Those are pretty good. I really like real good. I wish they were a little warmer. They're not super warm. Oh, mine was. Really? I mean, I pulled from the center, too. Okay. That aioli is so good. That is very good aioli. I want that on a burger. I know, yeah. So I will say, as good as these are, I forgot how expensive they were until we looked at the menu again. These are $14. I don't know if they're $14 good. Like, I would prefer them as, like, a side dish, like, with a burger or something like that. But I think just as... The fries alone, they're definitely worth trying. Like, I'm not mad we got these, but like, when I look at how small the portion is, I think 14's a bit too steep. But they're still worth getting. And I'm really glad we came to the Enchanted Roads today. Like, we got delicious drinks, a good snack. It's been a good time out here at the Grand. Alrighty, our trip to the Grand Floridian is complete. Mm -hmm. What did you think? I really like the Grand. It's one of my favorite, easily. Yeah, it is really, really nice. I think some good pros of this resort is just how nice it is like there it's it's so well done and it's very clean feeling like it's very mm -hmm. clean it's very close to magic kingdom that's another huge yeah. perk if if not the the absolute biggest perk is that you are the closest resort to magic kingdom with the exception of the of the contemporary mm -hmm. it's also not very big like the yeah. the grounds like the last couple of resorts we've done we've walked around a lot but now, like this one, it's, you know, you walk a, a little bit and you've reached the end and you go to the other side, you've reached the end and it's all pretty simple and straightforward. Mm -hmm. it, it was hard to find some cons for this place. I'd say, I think the number one would be is that it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's it's a, a little stuffy in the best way. I mean, it's Victorian themed. Mm -hmm. So as nice as it is, that may not speak to everyone's style or everyone's wallet. Yeah. Because this is one of the most expensive places to stay on property, no matter what the season is. And you can kind of feel out of place if you're kind of just wearing, like, just regular clothes. Like us, yeah. Like, today, you know, we didn't know where we are going to end up going. We ended up wearing just t-shirts and shorts and hats and whatever. And so, um, to see a lot of people walking around, especially wearing, like, wedding attire, like, mm -hmm. it feels very out of place to be here. Mm -hmm. um, but don't, don't let that discourage you from coming to this resort, because there are lots of good things here. Yeah. And there's, there's been a few other people who have worn kind of like similar clothing, oh, for clothing sure. as us. Oh, for sure. 
obviously the construction is a big con right now, but that's not going to last forever. But other than that, like there's so much the resort has to offer that I never really truly realized until mm -hmm. today. Let me know in the comments below. Have you guys stayed here? Have you guys wanted to stay here? Thank you guys so much for coming along. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And thanks for making memories with us. We'll see you next time.